And they have intentionally made it this way so that they can get people to join them and stay with them until they're so deeply involved and committed that it's too late. And that is why the degrees of initiation. So stick it out and you'll find out that these guys are the greatest liars, deceivers, manipulators, and scum that exist upon the face of the earth. Typhon in their teachings is the desire of the few pitted against the good of the many. Now if you understand what I just said, you understand that these are communists, socialists. They believe Typhon is the spirit of dissension and discord that breaks up unity of purpose by setting factions against each other so that great issues lose the name of action. The desire for riches, pomp, power, and, listen to this, folks, sovereignty, by which this evil genius was obsessed, reveals the temptation by which humanity is deflected from its ultimate goal and led into the byways of sorrow and despair. Typhon, the queen of Ethiopia, and the 72 conspirators represent the three destructive powers preserved to modern Freemasonry as the murderers of the master builder Hiram Abiff. You will see that Hiram Abiff was never murdered. In fact, in the Bible you will see that when the Temple of Solomon was completed, he went back home to Tyre. But in the Freemason legend, Hiram Abiff, the master builder, was killed and the temple was never completed. So everybody is blaming all of this upon the Jews. It is not the Jews, folks because all of this is a front. It's symbology for what they really, really mean. Hiram Abiff was really, folks, Jacques de Molay of the Knights Templar. And all of this will make much more sense to you several shows down the road because we have lots and lots of information to go through before you put it all together. Now, these three destructive powers preserved to the modern mystery school known as Freemasonry as the murderers of the master builder Hiram Abiff, who was really Jacques de Molay, are ignorance, superstition, and fear, what they call the destroyers of all good things. When you get even deeper into their teachings, you find out that ignorance, superstition, and fear stand for the state, the church, and the mob. And those are the things that they have sworn to destroy and substitute themselves as the ruler of the world in a benevolent despotism, a totalitarian socialist state. Because from the very beginning, these people have been pure, true communist socialists. They are the heart and soul and core of international socialism. They believe the advent of greed and perversion marked the end of the Golden Age, the Osirian Age, which the Osirian cycle is just a symbology of this. And the Golden Age, of course, Golden Oro, always has stood for the sun. Osiris is representative of the sun. And outwardly, these people worship the sun, but the sun is just another symbol for their god, Lucifer the light, the intellect. And with the good prince Osiris, the deeper truth, returned to his own land, he became the victim of a hideous plot. So what is this mysterious chest, so beautiful in its outer appearance, but so fatal in its application? Well, folks, Plato who was wise in the wisdom of the Egyptians and who was an initiate of the mystery school, would have answered that it was the body that lures the soul into the sorrows of generation. Now, if this interpretation is projected into the social sphere, the chest becomes symbolic of material organization. 
Witness the application of this thought to Christianity, where the pomp and glory of the outer show of a vast ecclesiastical mechanism has all but destroyed the simplicity and dignity of the primitive revelation of the mysteries. That is their exact words. See, I didn't make that up. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of the mystery school. And it is an indication, if you didn't think so yet, that Christianity is their enemy. They intend to destroy Christianity and all Christians. The blood will flow when the new world order takes power in the world. And if you sit back and say, well, I'm not worried because I'm going to be raptured, I feel sorry for you because you are going to suffer tremendously. Because in my research, I have found that most of the theologians in the Protestant religion of all denominations who are responsible for this doctrine of the rapture are Freemasons. And they are in control of the World Council of Churches. They are responsible for the bringing together of the different religions in the World Council of Churches to attempt to merge them all into one and then change the doctrine to the New World Religion. And if you don't believe that, you get off your little butts and go out there and start looking instead of just listening and accepting. For it is true. And their doctrine, folks, is Zionism. I can tell you right now, Jerry Falwell has admitted publicly that he is a Zionist, and we know that he is also a member of the mystery schools, and many others that you follow blindly instead of reading the words of Jesus Christ. You're all split up. Do you know the original teachings of Christ have been so perverted that there are thousands of different sects of the Protestant religion? And the Vatican is the original perversion of the mysteries established by a pagan Roman emperor, a worshiper of the sun. I hope you're all beginning to open your mind. And I know I'm going to get a lot of letters from a lot of fanatics who don't believe this. <clears throat> and those are the people who will be hurt the most when they find out that it is all true. When they find out that it is all true. Back to their doctrine. The murderers rush from the palace with the lead-sealed casket and cast it with its kingly contents into the dark waters of the Nile. Thus are the ideals which lead men into the paths of truth and righteousness obscured, and with truth no longer evident, according to them, error which is the Christian church, can rule supreme. Typhon, by now you should know, that Typhon is their designation for Christianity. Typhon ascended the throne as regent of the world, swinishly gloating over a dejected humanity he had led into dark and devious byways. By the Nile may we not understand the river of generation, in the current of which souls imprisoned in mortal nature move helplessly upon the never-ceasing current. Now they believe that truth is dead. And according to their belief, with truth dead or at least exiled to the invisible world, material facts were superseded by opinions. Opinions bred hatreds, and men finally fought and died over notions both senseless and soulless. And that is another deception and another lie. For in my research, I have found that in every instance of the most terrible things and wars that have ever happened on the face of the earth, these men are the ones who have brought it about <coughs> have brought it about greed became the dominating impulse they say gain the all absorbing end and ruthlessness the all sufficient means 
In the dark ages of uncertainty, when reality hid its face and no man dared to know, the leering typhon ruled his ill-gotten world, binding men to himself by breeding a thousand uncertainties to sap courage and weaken conviction. Men asked, why seek to 